Hey, you're looking at my ceiling. So I am about to do some cleaning. Uh, we got my son's birthday party this weekend. He wants a wrestler theme birthday party. But uh, the real reason for this video is this is RPG, not RPG a day. <laughs> this is my 30 day world. And today is day three. And day three is all about your big bad evil guy. Your, your main guy in your setting, basically. Um, so I've told you guys a little bit about my setting. Uh, before I tell you exactly about my big bad evil guy, I need to mention that my world has been built around all my games. Uh, different campaigns, different one-shots, and things like that. Now, I had a campaign. I've actually had two campaigns uh, for the Eight Pillars of Death. The first one was a family game when I lived in Grand Rapids, and we played for a while before um, we ended up moving back to the side of the state. So we had to end, end that game. That game was built up around eight factions that made up one larger faction. Imagine sub-factions. The sub-factions included a, a cult of dra uh, a dragon cult, or a bunch of dragon cultists. Um, it included a necromancer and his undead army. Um, now, taking inspiration from Horde of the Dragon Queen, for example, the Cult of the Dragon was trying to bring back Tiamat. That was because I was using Horde of the Dragon Queen a little bit. Um, now, Tiamat would have been the leader of that one-eighth portion of the Eight Pillars of Death. The Eight Pillars of Death were going to bring out a bigger, more evil guy who could help them take over the world. And in turn, they would all be granted different portions of the world. And that's the premise between the uh, that's agreed upon by the Eight Pillars of Death. Hey, let's take over the world together, unify our evil forces, and leverage it to take over. And once we take over, then we will divide things up, should it get to that. Now, I never finished coming up with my main bad guy who was above all of that. Um, so, let me take you to a different portion of my world. I had a campaign where Nate from WASD20, my friend Dustin, his wife Nicole, and my wife... Paula, uh, we, and we had a couple other people that came and, and joined us at a few different times. And I think we ended up with three uh, people who had joined us at various points. Um, all right, I'll be in there in a second. Uh, so in this campaign, the idea, it was, um, the idea was that a ancient god who had been not destroyed, because you couldn't kill him, um, had been dismembered, chopped up into pieces, and his body parts spread around the planet the, uh, in different places. They were petrified and put in different places, because if you didn't petrify them or change them, they found a way to come back together. So, the idea is that this cult for them, because again, I, I like playing on cults and stuff, was trying to bring this deity back. Now this deity, what the players found out, was not actually a deity. He was a cleric and a sorcerer. I think he was a sorcerer. Maybe he was a warlock. Anyways, point was, is he found a way to take what some use to become liches. He found a way to make himself immortal, and he found a way to give him, well, basically he was multi-class, 20 levels of each, um, of each class. But he, in theory, was the most powerful being of that time, so many called him a god. Okay, I'll be in there. Um, so anyways, long story short, he probably is my most powerful villain, and maybe, maybe he is the guy who's uniting the eight pillars of death. Um, and I've thought about that as well. 
he has been resurrected in my setting. In fact, I did a cutscene in my game that I, I let the players experience uh, him being brought back. Uh, but he wasn't brought back at full power because they did not get all of his body parts. Many of his cultists sacrificed themselves in order to bring him back, too. So anyways, that is probably my most powerful uh, villain. My most ruthless one, too, because he um, he will sacrifice anything to win. He, he doesn't value his followers' lives. He does not... He doesn't care about anybody or anything other than just being as powerful as they come. Um, he's found a way to capture people's um, essence. Uh, he takes their souls, sometimes fuses it into other items. In fact, there's an artifact in my world that is a former cultist of his that... Um, if the players get it, they can basically find out just how bad this guy is. Because this former follower has a lot of resentment since he's been trapped inside of an artifact. Um, now the weapon is an evilly, evil aligned weapon, but that's besides the point. So anyways, that's my most brutal villain um, that is currently in my setting. I love, again, epic things, so I have some pretty powerful villains in my world. Uh, but I also give my players a lot of power, too. So, you know, I let them roll stats. I let them, you know, have magic items. And um, I'm usually pretty flexible on their power levels. So, um, do I think any... I don't think I've had any players who could remotely stand up to that guy. But, uh... Yeah, so anyways, that's it. I'm going to end that here. Um, again, this is hashtag my 30 day world. Um, so if you want to see more videos like this, look up hashtag my 30 day world on Twitter. Uh, you'll, you'll get a link to all the videos, the absolute tabletop Kickstarter, and you can find out more about that there. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will talk to you guys next time. Peace. Yeah.